Yeah, but first first off, I know we've talked about it like sort of privately over messages and stuff, but congratulations. Like Sucker Punch came out and it was a number one, which is fucking awesome. Like yeah. how how does that feel, especially given like the circumstances of twenty twenty where it was like I'm sure it had to feel like what the fuck do we do now? You know? Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean that dude, that record was literally kind of like in its own way, kind of like uh, something to lean on, to be honest, during mm. um, during lockdown, because obviously we, we made it in 2019. Right. And then we actually sat on the record for a year, you know, kept on wondering, oh, should we put it out in the summer? Should we drop it here? Should we drop it there? Like just trying to think when the right time be. And then we all kind of came to the conclusion that 2020 was so shit that yeah. let's not have our album associated with that year. <laughs> so and then tw- we thought 2021 was going to be a little bit better. But yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, a, a weird time to be putting out a weird time, but also a really amazing time to be putting out music because people are like, just want more, more, more consuming, consuming. consuming yeah. yeah, everyone's really craving it, and I like I've said this before, and I think I think those of us that hang on through this suck are gonna have a lot more like really great shit to say, especially artists. Like, um, you get to sort of put to words, uh, and and like the emotion that everyone's been feeling and all the angst and like just just kind of helplessness a lot of people have felt and I, I know you sort of just when we started touched on it like I personally have felt like it's been hard to just get up creatively like you just mm. kind of feel a little sapped um but I, that's a really cool way to think of it it's just like you got uh it's something to lean on and yeah and give people 100 <laughs> percent, man like even like sorry you're right with that mate yeah wrong pipe like my own spit Dumb. yeah um yeah man i mean like i was even just saying to the lads last night because obviously we're kind of in a studio right now um and we're i, I haven't really bothered writing anything really until i get into this environment where like it's mm-hmm. kind of like a fresh cook environment where it's like okay you're gonna track you're tracking tonight on this on this song that we're finishing Oh wow! Um, you know, hopefully you got something, and I think that's kind of where I can then then I can like sort of go inwards and sort of see what's in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I know there's some writers that literally will write a song a day, or will write every single week, and always be and they'll be hard on themselves if they haven't written something. Whereas I'm just like maybe it's because I'm naturally quite a lazy dude that like I'm not <laughs> I'm, I'm not out there grafting too hard. <laughs> so my my thesis is that it'll either just happen or it won't. I'm not gonna like be in the pursuit of a constant perfect song or like a perfect kind of like hook do you know what i mean like yeah it's, it's one of those things that i'll do and people will either like it or they won't and so yeah okay. 2020 has just basically made me even more lazy than i already was which just... is a scary thought for sure <laughs> dude it, i it it made it made a lot of people really lazy like people that I, that i thought were not like people you couldn't break it it broke so it was yeah 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 it's just a tough a tough year all around man but uh you know sort of going back to sucker punch you guys made it made it in thailand yeah and then like if you were to tell your 14 year old self like hey man in, in a couple years you're gonna you're gonna go to thailand with all your buddies and you're gonna make a record and then it's gonna like gonna be a number one in the uk like what do you think you would have thought like would you be like get the get the fuck out of here well, yeah, but we, yeah, dude, a hundred percent. And to be honest, we kind of had that with every record we've made, to be honest, especially like the sort of from our, from sinners onwards, we've made like, we've now made, you know, like two records in Los Angeles, a record in Nashville with obviously yourself mm-hmm. um, and Jakir. Um, and then we came back and made a record in England. And then we were like, the next record, we, we can't make it in, in England. We've got to go abroad. Mm-hmm. Um, damn, it's windy in here. Um, but, yeah, I think to, I never would have envisioned like making a record in Thailand like that to me kind of that place kind of speaks of sort of like, oh, that's where you go traveling, you know, with your friends or mm. that's where, you know, you're backpacking and, and stuff like that. So right. to go to that kind of that space and it, and it turn into like a bit of like a utopia, to be honest, like it didn't really feel real. Yeah. Which yeah. maybe I, I, I always believe that you are like a byproduct of either what's going on then and there and also your surroundings. Um, you know, and I think there's like, I mean, for example, on the record that we, we made together, obviously we worked on Sucker Punch together as well, but like, mm. 
on night people like you can hear that we made that record in nashville uh, at least i can when i come away from it i like oh i didn't realize you had that twang in your voice do you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah. you know and there are there are some songs in there which sort of you know yeah. you know they kind of oh you froze and this what's interesting is i think thailand because it had no way to sort of like a, a musical headspace um Oh yeah, it means that the record kind of just sounds all over the shop in that sense. You know what I mean, like it, it doesn't. Yeah, you wouldn't be like, oh, they made they went they made that record in Thailand, you know. So that's um that's a really fascinating point that I had never really given like a a full consideration to of like you're you're going to sort of a musically neutral place, right? Like yeah, like Thailand's not known for like their pop music or or music much in general or maybe maybe they are and i'm just ignorant but like nashville la new york like and they yeah. all kind of have a sound like you said like nashville you can tell when a record's made at nashville especially when a record's coming out of blackbird like it's got a thing yeah uh and you can you can often tell when a record's coming out of la so that's that's a really interesting point of like going somewhere sort of like musically neutral to just sort of see what happens was that totally man it was like you kind of sorry we're gone what yeah. were you saying i, no, I, I was just, just gonna say in a way in a way it kind of gave us the freedom yeah you know like that liberation of like and also like i i've i i know that when when we made records in nashville or los angeles or when even when we made records back in england if we're in a, an environment in which we can avoid work or quote unquote hard work hard work then like we usually do <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean like when we were in Nashville, it was always like, all right, cool. Well, this band's in town tonight or our friends are over and they're playing a gig or, oh, do kids recommend that we go to this bar and this is happening tonight and the ice hockey game's on, blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? Like there's always yeah. something to do yeah. and to like not be in the studio. And obviously Los Angeles is like, is rife for that. Do you know what I mean? Like people yeah. go there just to be like, to make friends seriously, you know? So right. um, every single night of the week you're out. But like in Thailand, it's like, it is. it was us, it was Dan Austin, it was our friend Henry who was engineering it, mm -hmm. and it was then literally people that worked at the studio. We obviously so, and obviously England, we were kind of like off hours if that makes sense. So there wasn't really too much like talking to people back home. Yeah, do you know what I mean there was just, there really was no distractions. So you know if we were having like a challenge in the studio, like a song just wasn't coming together, there wasn't a thing of let's just leave that tonight. We're going out. You know it was like no no we're gonna we're gonna have to crack on them with this until three in the morning till we get it right. You know so. There was definitely like an intensity to the record, which is strange because it contradicts the environment. You know, like there was an intensity to our work ethic, which really didn't flow with like this absolute paradise yeah. kind of like tropical, you know, place that we we found ourselves in. Yeah, and that that's really interesting. And you guys, you you said that you made a point to like we need to go abroad. What was sort of the 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 driving force for that? Of like, I oh, know we don't want to do this in England, or we need to go somewhere else um i think i think we need we needed we all kind of like in our own ways needed to get out of england and um there's nothing better than like un unplugging from the world you know like and and like really unplugging from it and it was kind of like again like a few of us had gone through some some stuff with partners and that sort of shit which you know mm. the classic stuff that happens and not the classic breakup just before <laughs> somebody guys makes a record well that's sort of bullshit yeah um but, you know, and there was different different levels of severity to it. But like, um, you know, even that we it was one of the first times that, we, you know, as a group of us or, you know, more than just one of us going through the exact same thing, the exact same time. And like, I didn't want to go and make a record in a, you know, farmhouse up in, like, in Wales or something. And I, I love Wales, but like the point being that I don't want to be somewhere that is going to be bleak, you right. know? Yeah. Um, and there was like conversations that goes like Brussels or like there's a studio in Berlin we were looking at. But really, it was just like, how far can we go away from this place? How far can we get? Yeah. And we landed, we landed on Thailand. So, uh, that's, yeah, that's it just fun. it all seemed to happen. And also a lot of the shoes that were closer to home that we were invested in or looking at, they ended up getting booked up. So it's almost like the option just kind of presented itself to us, you know? So, yeah, that's that's awesome. And you're also going to a place where you don't speak the language, too. So like going out and like you know going out for the nightlife is a little different and it's almost like eh, well i guess I, we'll just stay here <laughs> yeah totally man i mean we'd have like a few because literally we we're in a place called bang Sheree, which is a, literally like a a tiny tiny fishing village mm. and and i mean there's like 
a few bars, but like they're it's all locals and maybe some expats have like moved to Thailand from England or Australia for banter. But like, mm -hmm. you know, there's not really too much going on. And we only went out once or twice to, no, I think we went once. No, we went twice to a place called Pattaya, mm -hmm. which if it's, um, you know, the hangover three yeah. where like, they're, like they're obviously had like crazy night out in Bangkok. Yeah. It was like that. It was fucking off the grid. <laughs> and actually, I think what was weird is we went into it and like just went there, like, oh, we'll have a you know, rest of chilled night. And it just got so crazy that we were like, yeah, we probably we probably aren't gonna go out in Pattaya again because we don't know where it's gonna end up for us. So yeah, it, you're right in the sense that like, there wasn't too many options. So we just found it, we had like little routines, like we'd go to like a certain bar if we wanted to have like a beer before dinner or whatever. But yeah, we were just we were just, and also the other thing is that when you're making something that really feels special like you know not to sound kind of um there's no other way of sound of sounding big-headed other than saying this but like in terms of we knew we were making something that was really good for us and like nutritional if that mm -hmm. makes sense it was like we didn't want to live uh, leave it alone we wanted to binge off it and right. we knew we were, every time we were going in things were happening we were like wow this song has really fallen into place and so then like the bravery internally just you know tenfolded every single time i mean songs like what you're doing right now were kind of coming together mm -hmm. in like a two hour three hour spell of me and dan jamming in his room and then we recorded it the next day you know like yeah this felt like it was a, a bit of a purple patch for us so it's kind of like now nah, we, we just gotta really stay focused and again when you're enjoying what you do you want to be there you know yeah. i'm sure we've all been part of projects where like you know actually you know i don't i don't a, I don't need to go to the studio today, but I don't want to go to the studio. Oh, right. That's you know? a that's a big difference of like <laughs> yeah. when your parts are done, but you still want to be involved yeah. versus like when your parts are done, you're like, fuck this, I'm out of here. Or like, yeah. like <laughs> yeah, we've had those days of like, yeah. I've had so many of those days where it's like seven o'clock in the morning. I'm one of the only people at the studio and I'll look over at the assistant and go just like, what the fuck are we doing? You know, yeah. <laughs> like, it's just like. Oh, but then you have those, those, like you said, those sessions where it's like you're in it and the, you're, you're all on the same like wavelength and you're mm -hmm. all after the same thing and the same vision and it's just synced and you just want to stay in that as long as you can. It's a very potent thing, man. Do you know what I mean? Like you can, you can feel it in the room. Like oh. you can feel it when it's coming, when something's happening. And like you say, everybody, it's like, you're all singing from the same hymn sheet, which is an expression we got over in uh, in England. Yeah. Um, but like you know that I I don't know if you guys use it or not, but you know it's that it it really is hitting the sweet spot, you know, like yeah. with that kind of stuff. And yeah, it's uh, it just it, sometimes that it, it can carry you know sessions and have a bit of a rollover, you know, two three days. I mean, there are some days where like I might have gone to bed at like four in the morning, we were up again at nine ten o'clock in the morning just be, just because we wanted to be in there again, you mm. know and. And also, I mean, for me, I don't think I'll ever record a record that isn't done at a residential again, because mm. having that luxury of being able to just get up and walk downstairs and check in with the producer, the engineer, like, right, what's going on? What we're we working on right now, blah. Rather mm -hmm. than it being a thing of, right, we're going to leave, we're going to stop off for a coffee, then we're going to go to the studio, but then we've got to go out again and get lunch, and we've got this, we've got this, all this. It just breaks up the day. It just wastes time. Yeah. Um, And then, of course, you do have that luxury of being like if we want to go till you know three four in the morning we can you yeah. know and it's i, I mean yeah i mean I, I we 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 made a record with you guys over in nashville where like it was it was kind of like clocking in for work or for school mm -hmm. you know sometimes it was like with the hours i mean by that yeah. sense like obviously like making the record was a lot of fun but like you know we knew that more often than not we would be out the studio by seven o'clock at night mm -hmm. you know yeah had the same thing when we made a record with neil lavron it was like all right, guys, it's it's cool. it's, it's six o'clock. That's us, you mm -hmm. know, 10 till six break for lunch, you know, for a few hours outside of lunch. And that's yeah. kind of it. So, and that does work too. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm finding more often than not that we really get into like a, a very, very creative um, and sort of, yeah, I guess, again, brave like headspace when like it's the early hours, you know? Yeah, um, there's, there's a, there's a freedom in that. Like there's, um, I, I, I'm, I'm very much, in sort of the same uh moving towards the same headspace of you know i have this this space that i've started doing stuff at and it's it's small i don't need much like i don't have 
an ISO booth. I've got a little spot to do drums. Like if we want to do vocals, like we can do it in, in this room together, or you can be out just right there. But mm. like the whole thing of this big, big studio, you're across this, like you're super far away. Yeah, we can see you, but you know, it's on camera or we're having a talk and it's like, okay, go like, mm. per, you know, dance monkey. It, it can be, it can be tough and not everybody thrives in that. I've seen like, amazing singers um that just can't get into the vibe of it and and can't give their best performances of it where um i won't i won't say which artist it is but it's he's one of the best singers i've ever worked with well i just gave away it's a he but it doesn't matter mm. um we're you know doing his record at blackbird and he was still killing it but it was taking him a while to like get into it right it was like man mm. i just it's gonna take me like take like an hour or two to sort of get to where we're getting like takes where he was happy and Jakir was happy. And then months after the record came out, he needed to do like a punch for something. And I was like, well, just come to the house, come to my place and we'll just punch it. And it was like, we were done in five minutes. Mm. And it's just like the pressure and all the shit's been stripped away. We're just like, we're here. He's used to, you know, doing vocals in his basement. And it's yeah. like, okay, well, let's get you where you're comfortable. And that's, I think that's a big part of kind of what you're getting at is like it, just the the feeling of being free of like, hey, yeah, I'm just going to roll out of bed. I don't need to put real pants on. I can wear sweatpants and just go downstairs. And like, if I feel like cutting a vocal, then I'll cut one. Like, yeah, do, I mean, I don't know if you've seen any of the footage of us when we're in Thailand, but the majority of the time, shirts are off or walk around swimming trunks. Yeah. I, 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 I didn't even take like a big suitcase and I took like a weekend suitcase. I was like, I'm not going to be wearing clothes really, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And that was the other thing I was going to say when you just talk about that, that idea of like getting comfortable to do a vocal. Like mm -hmm. last night we, we started doing vocals at midnight and we finished like three in the morning. Mm -hmm. And it's like, because it's the same thing when someone's like, right, you, are you ready to do your, your vocal at two in the afternoon? I'm like, well, unless we're opening a stage at a European festival, at what time am I singing at two o'clock in the afternoon? That's a really good point. You know, like, and that's the other thing is like, we, most time I'd rather do like, again, tonight I'll probably do some singing at like nine, 10 o'clock, the sort of time that we'd be going on stage. Yeah. Because otherwise it doesn't make any sense, you know, like, um, and that's, you know, I mean, that's why when we did stuff like back in the day when we were doing stuff like Warped Tour, you know, and you're talking about, like, now I think of it, I'm like, how did we actually do do some of those performances because like your tour manager you don't know when you're gonna play you wake up and your tour manager just like it's 11 a.m you're playing at 11 45 <laughs> sit you know what i mean it's like get dressed have a thing of water and go and play you know yeah. in front of how many people are, uh, in a walk tour situation which you know as, as i don't know if you went when when you when you're kind of coming through or not yeah when you were growing up yeah yeah like it's yeah. what it's a car park it's hot it's shit oh like you know and you sometimes you walk past bands and like the heavier bands they're screaming at 11 o'clock in the morning uh-huh you know what i'm saying like yeah. that's uh, not normal have you done warp tour in phoenix it's hell on I earth have. it's yeah it's, li it's literally li like playing a gig on the sun yeah it's yeah. He literally hell on earth like people's shoes are melting and like yeah i actually you mentioned that uh i, w I was i had some buddies rolling through town they were playing warp tour and they had just finished their set and we were like sitting there talking I'm like, Jesus, what the fuck's going on over there? And it's like Dillinger escape plan, just mm. like just at noon, just scre yeah. screaming, like you said. It's just like they're going ape shit. Like I think he shit in a bag and was throwing it. I was like, what's classic. going on right now? Yeah. Yeah. Classic. <laughs> We've uh, been there, mate, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> Shitting in bags, saying it, fans. <laughs> um Yeah, I mean that's that's again it goes it goes back a lot of a lot of this stuff, man, again to like also like the human body like you know you're not yeah. really meant to be performing at that sort of time and then also like you know for example on our record we've got songs like glasgow and we've got songs like voice notes and we've got mm -hmm. you know tracks which are like they're very like sincere and like i'm not saying that like the other songs aren't you know coming from that place but like you know i, I wanted to be on the edge of being sober and having some shit in my system you know and i wanted to be yeah. doing that late at night because i wanted to be like you're, you're telling some that is maybe we i don't i didn't necessarily feel good doing it if that makes sense mm -hmm. you know and like the, probably i think when we when we would have made um night people you guys like 
I think it was usually either just me and you or or me and Jakir cutting a vocal. Now, like when we're doing a vocal, everyone's in the room, you mm. know, like the whole time. That's just the way that, that our thing has just evolved, that I've got less and less kind of like on the edge or like on the grid about people hearing me sing or hearing me record. Yeah. And so, you know, again, that comes in a place when, when you're a little bit faded and it's like, you know, <laughs> one o'clock in the morning and everyone else is pretty faded. Yeah. You're doing this song. I mean, I remember came in after tracking vocals to Glasgow and people were crying. And I was like, you guys need to get your shit together <laughs> because you, there's no way you can be more sad about the situation than I am. Yeah, you guys need to um, sober up. You know, but so it's, um, yeah, yeah. You guys need to sober up and I need to get more drunk. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there's, it's, um, it's, it's an interesting thing, man. Like, I don't think there's so, some songs also, I feel like in some, some of the best songs of all time, it's been, somebody tracking at the right place at the right time and someone just happened to be there to capture it oh you know? yeah yeah uh that you just triggered um like wild horses rolling yeah. stones that that take is like mick and and keith just passed like they're singing and passing a jack daniels bottle back and forth as they're like cutting mm. this vocal at like three in the morning like there's a lot of those things where it's um yeah when you want to be in that headspace it's like it's really fucking difficult to be Faded and in that headspace at one in the afternoon when that's not really a socially acceptable thing to do. You know, yeah, I like, mean, we do do it, but yeah. it's still not a good look. Yeah. yeah. You're like, when you're doing it, you're like, nah, I probably shouldn't be doing it, but fuck it. But when it's yeah. one in the after, like one in the morning, you're like, okay, well, this is normal. Like, this is fine. 100%. And it's, it's one thing having like a great melody or great lyrics or whatever, but it really is the execution, it's performance that, that will. I think conv will convince people that they sh that, that should be their anthem, you know, like it's yes. one thing being yours, but again, like, you know, and that's why at, at the moment, I feel like some of the, the big artists in the world are like, I don't even necessarily wouldn't even say if they're putting out the best music, but they've, the way they're performing on tracks is convincing people that they should be something that, that they're aware of, you know, and into. Mm. So yeah, it's an interesting one. It is. I, that's an important point for, I think a lot of, um aspiring producers uh and and artists to to consider like if you're going to be doing a, a performance if you're especially if you're a singer like take into consideration when you're used to performing like mm. if you're used to going on at nine o'clock at night well maybe that's a good place to start instead of like yeah, yeah. oh it's 10 o'clock in the morning and we've got you know guitars and bass to get to like let's get this going it's like well mm. that's um I think that's something a lot of people don't even really take into consideration because we make this sort of like distinction between like live and like, okay, now we're going to the studio and mm. it's, it's not, it's, you, you really can't make that distinction uh, as clearly as you think you want to. Um, no, a hundred percent, man. And there's also been times where I've literally done a vocal because I kind of felt guilty that it was on, so it was on somebody else's agenda or time to do something. So I've done it mm -hmm. or you don't want to come across as like, not into an idea or you know worse off like you're not bothered or lazy or whatever so you do your thing and again it's like really it's it's also about finding people that you can have that transparency and honesty with being like hey you know what actually i'm just not going to sing at all today because i'm not in the right headspace for it fuck your agenda fuck your calendar this is what's going to happen yeah and it takes a long time i think i mean it's, it's taken me almost 15 years to understand that and also how to um project that in a way that isn't you know putting people's backs against the wall and also not making it about me and suffering from lead singer syndrome. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. But got, you know, there's... Th th that's, that's an, another important thing. Cause it, on the surface, it, it might seem selfish, but it's really not because, uh, like yet, like take this podcast, for example, we were thinking about doing it yesterday. Uh, mm. I was not having a great day and I was like, you know what, man, I'm just not in the headspace to do it. Let's like, let's do it tomorrow. And that on the surface is, has seems like maybe it could be selfish, but I'm going really, I, I'm being more, res I feel like I'm trying to be more respectful of your time because I, I, you're yeah, taking yeah. time out of your day to come do this. And if I'm going to just not be in the right headspace and, and not be as present as I need to be, then it's mm. just not giving the amount of respect that you that you deserve yeah. and it's the same thing with it's, doing it's, that vocal that yeah. you're talking about yeah it's doing a disservice to the bigger picture man for sure exactly where if if you just go like hey you look i'm just it's it's not happening today well then okay cool we'll just do something else
I wonder I wonder if that's actually also like a sign of the times dude that like people are having that level of transparency and also like there's not like a, a shaming that comes with it because mm-hmm. again it's like you know uh, I think quite more often than not as human beings you know you do stuff sometimes not because of peer pressure but there is like a pressure attached to situations where you're like well I don't want to be the person that let, lets this down so I'll just get on with it anyway even though I'm feeling like crap and it's like I actually think especially um amongst men um there's you know we all we've all suffered from like toxic masculinity like what is the what is the framework in which we as men should be like behaving and Mm. and what mental headspace we have and attitudes we have and like now there is that conversation which is universal in which everyone is just accepting it like you know what it's it's way better to have conversation and not and i think that does bleed into the environment in which you and i occupy of like you know being a recording artist or being a producer like Mm -hmm. you know and i think that's going to happen more and more as as time goes on and people become way more aware and comfortable with their own feelings and stuff like i think we'll be yeah in situations i mean we've grown as a band like if you thought we were like tight when you saw us you know back in what it was 2015 making a record like you know the conversations that we've been able to have as we've grown into our skin more and more and like in this environment like there is no sort of there really is that there is no sort of no just doesn't isn't in in the dictionary for us you know what i mean like in the, for the vocabulary mm-hmm. and it's like that, that takes time and again i think that relation some people hit off with people straight away when they're working with them and others it takes time for but yeah you know you can only do that like you say you can only turn up and when you feel good about it yeah know? and i i think that's just it's um it comes with a level of wisdom and maturity that i think just mm-hmm. comes with with being alive long enough and really taking those deep deep looks into yourself yeah. and being like okay why do i feel like a fucking psycho today oh yeah this and, you know and then being able to tell your buddies is like yeah that's the i'm uh, i'm not with it today you know and mm-hmm. and then to be like yeah okay i get it you know that when you're in your early 20s it can you don't even know what the fuck's going on with your own head let alone like if your buddy's having a hard day and you're like oh yeah okay fucking man up like let's get this yeah, over yeah, with yeah. right so yeah. I, I think a lot of it just comes with just being it's just a level of maturity it comes mm-hmm. with just being around seeing it enough and i think um we're we're both particularly in a field that uh allows you to see and experience a lot that maybe mm-hmm. maybe most don't kind of get to experience like um especially with like touring and stuff you're going to be putting a lot of different situations and then recording like you said like it's a fucking pressure cooker so Mm. every every range of emotion goes through everybody so it's um it's just one of those things i feel like i don't know maybe maybe we've just been fortunate to sort of do the self-work to to have that that uh mindset but i think like you said it's becoming a lot more prevalent um yeah definitely everywhere which is good for all of us. But, you know, this is good. I mean, we I haven't touched on anything that I wrote down, which is awesome. Um, but I did I did want to go back to what where did music start for you? Like, when did you have this moment of did you ever ha- like have this sort of moment of that's what I want to do? Like, I want to sing or like, where did um, it come from for you? Yeah, I mean, so growing up my sister would sit at the piano for hours just writing songs singing songs and i'd be just like the way our house was set up was that like the tv room was where the piano was like i'd be sitting there playing video games she'd be sitting there singing uh-huh. i think when i went to secondary school my mom was like you know mom and dad were like look do you want to learn an instrument like your sister and i was like no i'm cool uh and then my mom was just my mom was like no i really think it will be good for you It'd be good to like you know you need to find a way of like releasing some of your energy mm-hmm. um and so i picked up the guitar and started playing that and then it was one of those things where like i'd go and i'd learn like and like songs by the beatles or like i don't know fucking uh, whoever and whatever right and i remember turning around to my guitar teacher being like i have no interest in learning how to play that nirvana riff like i don't care like it means nothing to me Uh not because of nirvana but because it's like how does that help me as a person Uh and a writer get better i was like can you can we just start like even at like 12, 13, I was like, I want to be able to write songs. Mm. Um, and I want to be able to like, yeah, just do things that rather than doing karaoke, you know, like I want to be able to do 
so that I'm telling a story on top of. Yeah. So I think secondary school was that time where definitely, um, I mean, I first started playing in bands. When I was like 14, 15. Okay. Um, and yeah, obviously it was awful. Um, it always is. I'm glad. That, <laughs> I'm glad those things have, I'm glad that we didn't have streaming services or even at that time, I don't think we even had MySpace and crap like that. Like, cause I wouldn't want that stuff to be still floating about. Oh yeah. Um, but I kind of, I, to be honest, I kind of knew at 16 when I left, yeah, when I left college that like we, I'd booked this tour, me and the lads during the summer through like my, that I was, I, I was going to try being in a band, but also like, at, honestly, at that age, like, I think we all just really liked the idea of like going away as a group of lads and like, yeah, yeah, playing gigs and stuff was fun, but like we kind of, you know, it was more so about like, avoiding the real world if that makes sense like oh, responsibilities yeah. go to college go to university get a really good job get, you know get married have a kid buy a house whatever and that's all great and that's that's all fine but like at that age it was like the idea of having to go to college or like then even university i was just like i don't want to do that i don't even know who i am and what i want to do mm -hmm. so yeah i think it was kind of yeah 15 16 it was sort of like i just went through this phase of if i can avoid being an adult for as long as yeah. possible which is what i saw i saw music as a vehicle for that i was like yeah. oh that i will avoid all that that boring shit um and yes yeah, so that's when it kind of just kind of it kind of went and i remember going having a conversation with my college i was at because i was doing like business studies film studies um and oh, i think history or something like that and you no know, politics and stuff like that and like my teachers are like look if you if you want to go, because I went to the same college as Kira Knightley. So, and then when she was making like Bend It Like Beckham and then like Pirates of the Caribbean, mm -hmm. they let her still come and do her studies when she wasn't filming or whatever. Mm -hmm. And which she had like a tutor to help and whatever. So I was like, look, can I can I still do like online or, or whatever? And they're like, look, if you're going to leave college, we'll give you a year and you can have your spot back. But then they there actually was, we'll see you in a year sort mm -hmm. of thing. And so that just really kind of pissed me off because I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was the motivation you know like yeah. you have those moments in life fuck where like you. yeah fuck yeah. you like seriously yeah i was like like nah i ain't gonna be back trust me oh, I'll, I'll do whatever it takes not to come back and yeah. it's kind of funny now when like the other guys in the band have like really good relationships with some of their old teachers and like we'll we actually go in and like they'll go in and do stuff at the, the college and whatever and i've been asked to go and like do talks at my old <laughs> college or my old school about like they're making it in music or whatever i'm like you can get fucked yeah. because you were like what ser like serial doubt yeah. so you yeah. can suck all I the dicks i'm not sometimes. coming back yeah yeah exactly dude that's that's so funny that that actually uh triggers a, a funny memory for me that's very very similar when i so when i was gonna move to nashville the, like when i was Thinking about it, the reason I actually moved to Nashville to, to start was I was going to go to the Blackbird Academy because I was I was running a studio here in in Phoenix, and I just like I, I had nobody to learn from. It was just me, like it was me and the owner, and the owner was like an eccentric millionaire that didn't give a shit about anything, and like so, especially teaching you some stuff, yeah, dude. My first session, I had never done anything there. Like we're recording this band. It hits two o'clock and he goes, okay, it's two o'clock. I'm going to the dog park. I'll see you later. Good luck. He just leaves me. I was like, uh, okay, I don't know how to run any of this shit. So yeah. that's how he was. But uh, so I applied to get into the Blackbird Academy because I was like, well, you know, Blackbird's like this Mecca. This is like the place yeah. everyone wants to go. So maybe I'll go like further my education. And they were promising to like, you know get you placement and all this shit later so i uh, i had to go to my old high school to get uh my transcripts for them which doesn't make any fucking sense but i had to do it anyways uh and i was standing in like the lobby and the principal for my old high school uh who i'd known since i was like 12 came mm -hmm. through and was like what are you doing here i was like oh i'm getting my transcripts i'm gonna try to go to nashville and you know do engineering and he just went Ooh. okay good luck and he walked away i was like yeah fuck you dude like yeah, fuck yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> well 
Although, although sometimes maybe these people actually, it's it's an absolute masterclass of manipulation, and actually they're <laughs> motivating us deliberately with that sentiment. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe yeah. they're actually they are our biggest cheerleaders. Yeah. You know, maybe your principal is like, I'm gonna say something that's just gonna wind you up just to see how it goes. <laughs> you never know. I'm gonna put the maybe biggest fucking happened. chip on your shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know it, it worked out good. I never ended up going yeah. to the Blackbird Academy, but uh, that was funny. Uh, you didn't go to the Blackbird Academy. No, Did you hear? Then you still wound, you still wound it up at Blackbird, though. <laughs> yeah, which was awkward as fuck. Because <laughs> how did that how did that happen? <laughs> so uh, I'm I was accepted for like the semester that started in July, and we moved in January so we could get our feet underneath us and like I could get a job and make money. And then I met Jakir through like happenstance through some like family friends and uh i was like well i'll just ask him what he thinks i should do because i don't i don't really know what i should do should i spend the money to go to blackbird which i didn't have or should i just start you know knocking on doors and get an internship somewhere or whatever and um so i sent him the email he's like why don't you meet me for breakfast tomorrow and i met him and we talked and he's like well why don't you stop by my studio next week we're gonna be finishing up some rough mixes whatever mm -hmm. stopped in and then he offered me an internship which was amazing uh so i immediately was like yeah i'll take that instead of spending the money to go to blackbird so now i had like the awkward sort of situation to go like oh hey uh email blackbirds like administrator or whatever and be like hey uh thanks for the opportunity but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be coming and they're like, well, what happened? I was like, oh, well, I just found another opportunity I'm going to pursue. And then literally was on site for the next six years. <laughs> and like, would, would, would walk past this lady that I had, like, told, hey, uh, sorry, I, I don't, uh, I'm not going to be there. I can't, I can't make it. I made it. I found a different opportunity, let alone did she know it was on site for <laughs> forever. And I was, like, trying to avoid her. But have, have you ever had that conversation with them since? Uh, no, it was just one of those like weird things that we just kind of like, well, that happened. And then <laughs> life's weird, man. Yeah, life is weird. Um, that's that's, you know, we're all it comes full circle. Now I'm back in Phoenix and doing the thing here and swing by and see your old principal. Oh, right. Uh, they closed. Actually, the school went bankrupt. So all right. that sucks. So uh, ironically, he lost his job yeah. and you got one. That's interesting, isn't it? Ooh, Ooh, good luck. Good luck. Yeah. yeah. Which is funny because he was a musician too, like for most of his life. So I think he felt like there's, he was... There you go. There's the context. So that's what it was about. He was yeah. like, ah, oh, okay, well, I didn't make it. So you won't make it. I get it. Yeah. We, yeah. People hold on to that sort of shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, it is what it is. Uh, so I just, I, I want to bring it back to real quick and then we'll sort of get to to wrapping this up but uh how, we talked a little bit about about sort of the mental health aspect of especially um in the context of 2020 and 2021 like how how are you balancing taking care of yourself and taking care of your your bandmates in in this sort of new world we're in like are you i mean are you managing it well? I, I personally have not been. Uh, mm. I've I've been going in and out of sort of taking it, taking care of myself, taking care of what I need to, and then just not. <laughs> mm. um, I think I think I think that's completely natural, man. I think that's kind of like that's the kind of carousel of life, right? You know, that's true. sometimes you get on and it's and it's good, and sometimes you're sort of looking over the fence, being like, not today. You know, it's it's, <laughs> it's kind of how it goes. But I mean. I think like I think everything is is kind of being um amplified right now mm -hmm. you know as well um I think everyone is kind of in that space where like anything could set them off both mm -hmm. good and bad yeah um so we're not really I don't think now is a good time for anybody to give themselves too much of um a hard time um about how you know they're kind of like making their way through stuff you know so and that and that goes for, for me and also for yourself but like i think with with the band like i think the way we kind of just navigate those sort of 
I mean, look, we, we, we've had an interesting year already. Like we started off this, this year, we had a, an amazing su- success with the album. Mm-hmm. But in the midst of that, we knew that we had to make some changes in our team. We knew we wanted to look at flipping our management company. You mm-hmm. know, we knew that like having not been on the road for almost at this point, 18 months, it's like finances aren't exactly great mm-hmm. uh, by any stretch of the imagination. So a lot of a lot of that sort of stuff can dictate the, the mood in our camp mm-hmm. um but then but then also something really like simple can happen and can quickly like it unravels and everything goes away in terms of like feeling down about stuff but i think we have a we just have a very very um open forum between us five and like nothing's really off bounds unless mm-hmm. somebody doesn't want to talk about something so if, um you know and I don't know. I just think that at this point, you know, I've spent more, I've spent more of my life with these people than I have without them. And yeah. I've spent more of my life also with these, these, these lads who like more than like, especially the last 15 years, than my mum, my dad, my sister, my partners, mm-hmm. you know, whichever one it's slotted in at whatever time, <laughs> um, you know, some of my best mates back home, like I love them and I know they love me, but there is a different, love with like people that you end up like like in you meet six we've ultimately ended up like being on this mad journey that like mm-hmm. they're not really my mates then they are literally my brothers so you know i don't have a brother but i know what it would feel like yeah i have a relatively good grasp on what it feels like so ultimately to answer your question in like a summary is like we just we just find a way of everything that happens we just have to talk about it and once we talk about it more often than not if it's something that feels massive Mm -hmm. we usually like dumb it down and if it's something that needs a little bit more uh, oxygen and conversation then we you know elevate into that that place so yeah I think we've been handling it relatively well and as I said like you know behind the scenes it's not been a great year for our band in terms of or you know the majority of artists yeah uh, unless you unless you're sitting on a you know a a load of cash in the bank um, it's been one of those where it's like we are trying to figure out how to just you know on a sort of, you know, is it very sort of um, the expression like, you know, hand to mouth? Is it hand to mouth? Yeah, I think I so. I think so. But um, it's a lot of that at the moment. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's I think also like our we've moved the goalposts about what's actually important, you know, as well. Mm-hmm. Like, I think sometimes we as people can find ourselves in a you know an environment in which we get obsessed with things that just don't fucking matter. So I think once you start like appreciating like my sister her therapist or he's not even really a therapist it's more like a life coach mm-hmm. my sister's like super on top of all this stuff and she uh-huh. just i listened to a podcast she did with one of her friends or with her life coach and it was about gratitude mm-hmm. and so like you know i was going through it was like, oh everyone else is you know either still getting to work or have been paid by the fucking government to not work um you know there's all these we're like it's the creative industry which has been completely you know left to its own devices it's like mm. you either survive this or you don't mm. i've got you know members of our crew who have like had to go and like you know go and get jobs as lorry drivers or, or whatever mm. and these are like some of the best in the fucking game at doing front of house yeah or you know have 15 years experience being a guitar tech blah, blah yeah all this yeah. stuff so like my sister would turn around to be like well you're not in that position so you need to be grateful for that and like mm. as soon as i started like really simplifying all of that sh- it and then started like individually but then as a collective so we really sort of like did a bit of like a debrief on life we're like we've got an awful lot to be grateful for so that in itself just enhanced our sort of mental space because it's like really what's happening is happening to everybody right now Mm -hmm. and every single producer artist management company record label promoter whatever in our industry is feeling the pinch in whatever way and what's also relatable to them, you know, like yeah, Drake might be sitting there being like, damn, I've just lost out on $200 million of touring last year, yeah. you know? But yeah. at the same time, he's like, well, I got one, two, three in the Billboard 100 right now. So life ain't that bad. Do you know what right. I mean? And like, or there might be a baby band who are like, we're just about to do that first big show in their hometown or the first big show in LA or whatever. And yeah. you know, have lost momentum. So like really in the grand scheme of things, um we've got a lot to feel good about and so i think that's whenever we're having a 
a bit of a shit day, we have that conversation. And again, like then you have like this huge victory of like the number one record where yeah, you no, know, it's our second number one, and we hadn't had one for you know at this point close to seven years. And maybe there was conversations on the on the outside world from other people being like, oh, I think that band's fallen off, or or you know, uh, are they going to put our record that's going to mean anything anytime soon, or whatever that shit looks like. And so in that way, it kind of vindicated, like it felt like a real victory for us because we all knew that we were doing something special and we all believed in it. Yeah. And then when the fans heard it, they like completely subscribed to it and backed us to the hilt. So, you know, it's a very special thing to be part of. And, you know, ultimately we did it together with you as well. I mean, we went back and forth on so much shit, man, like trying to we're getting some of the mixes together and like, you know, that record really felt like it was, there was no like, there was no like big identity on the record or there's, there's no, there's no like big character or person that was like a friend, Dan Austin, a friend, Colton, you know, we had one or two of um, other people, Dan makes a few songs, another, another mix, but they're all like people that are, like still, relative. we're still trying to make a name for ourselves, you know, like yeah. I really liked that kind of like underdog spirit that that record embodied. Yeah. So again, that was something to get our teeth into, you know? So yeah, the underdog spirit, that's um, that, I mean, candidly for me, that felt like, a, like, getting the seal of approval to like not not just mix one song but be, being entrusted to mix multiple was like that was a a big win for the underdog for me cuz that was like at a mm-hmm. moment where uh i you know i wasn't working a ton at the moment like i was about a month into not having a gig and like teaching boxing and i remember like i was pulling into the boxing gym at like 6 in the morning and like dan dan like you know what's at me it was like oh man we love it i was like oh wow that's uh did not mm-hmm. expect that because you get so many losses that you almost just sort of like ah, well what's another one but yeah, yeah, yeah uh you said something i think is really important that um and i need to take into uh a lot more account for myself is is just um moving the goalposts to a r- r- realistic um point because you know we're in pandemic times right now so you can't Mm -hmm. have the same you can't have the same like goals or standards for everything that you normally would because you just your hands are kind of tied and for me personally i'm extremely hard on myself and and uh you know most days feel feel like i'm just not doing enough you know feel like Mm. uh you know the the sort of typical like uh, man am I just one of those fucking like losers that never gives up the the job like never gives it up and it's like too late and you're you're forty five and you know, like the balding hair and the black cargo shorts and like you, you know you're doing front of house at a church, um, which you know no offense but um, you know it's not what you're off bro no that's not and, and well, I, you're I, not gonna be there either man I wouldn't worry about that shit uh, well you know some days if most days it feels that way, but uh, it's an important thing to sort of give yourself some, I think, um, grace. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Give, give yourself a little bit it of grace did. because it's times is fucking tough, especially in the music industry. So, dude, a lot, dude, a lot of this is temporary. And the, the other thing is that actually we're, we're still working in, in an art form, which ultimately will never die. The, right. the love and the hunger for music, for, for music fans that will never go away so mm-hmm. that it's always going to come back, which mm-hmm. is right now. It doesn't feel that way. Like do we ain't done a gig since September, 2019, you know, and it's like, like, you know, that it feels like there's, there's a lot of imposter syndrome going on at the moment. You know, there's a mm. lot of like, you know, you're falling out of love yourself as well. A little bit. Cause it's like, you know, Oh, well that was cool. I guess we'll just settle for this now, whatever, you know, but yeah. actually what's really important now more than ever, is to, to have that hit list of, no, this is what's going to come. This is what my aspirations are. This is what I'm working towards. And it's cool if today is only, you know, one step, because in, in a few weeks time, there might be a day where there's 10 strides made, you know? And I think that's just kind of, that's just the, the psyche that I'm trying to like have for myself, but also for those around me. It's just like, you know, not everything's gonna, not everything's gonna happen quickly. And also not everything, is always going to happen to you. Like mm-hmm. I've got friends in, in bands where like, you know, especially all, all of us that like live in London um, and especially near where I live, like in Hackney, it's like there's so many people from amazing bands, like you know, Nothing But Thieves or Night 75. 
um fucking i spent a lot of lockdown like on the phone to like lads in like horizon or raw blood and like we're all sitting there we're all feeling the same shit and it's like you know sometimes i sit there i have to look at it and go you know when i'm hearing like say one of my friends who's in one of the bands it's like arenas worldwide and they're talking about like oh yeah it's crazy you know like we just had to cancel we, we, we've had to completely cancel our, our us tour um and you know lost millions and millions of pounds doing it it's like shit mate i don't even think I don't even think our band has made a million pounds doing live music last year. Do you know what I mean? Or the, the year that we were touring or whatever. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, it's all about just accepting that like different people have different versions of reality and, and their own reality is going to be true, true to them. So it's like, yeah, you no, know, yeah. Right now there's some shit going on. Things aren't too great, but there's yeah. also a lot going on that is great and will be great once again. So yes, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So hundred percent. Oh, it is. I'm going to I'm going to move to some some quick questions, some like rapid fire here. Uh okay. Okay. So rapid fire. Rapid rapid fire, rapid fire with rapid. Colton. Yes. Uh <laughs> favorite bad action movie from 80s or 90s? If you have one. You know what? Probably Lethal Weapon. Fuck yeah. That's probably yeah, probably Lethal Weapon. Yeah. Um my girlfriend like at Christmas is trying to get me to watch Die Hard uh-huh. and I watched it and it, for me because I, I didn't grow up watching it uh-huh. and I waited till I was 30 to watch Die Hard I was like this is awful like I did not fuck with it at all oh. but then I'll go back and watch like Lethal Weapon I'm like yeah that feels right that feels cool that feels completely <laughs> that's aged amazingly that's whereas Die Hard, Die Hard hasn't so that's so funny because I mean like I love all the Lethal Weapons uh they're all i mean they're all just they're great uh i love yeah. all like i just love it bad 80s action movies and 90s um but i recently watched like the first lethal weapon and was like fuck this is this is dated but i love it and yeah. then i recently watched die hard and was like fuck this still holds up so that's funny uh <laughs> <laughs> um my wife i still can't get my wife to watch it so classic um ooh Stand another strong. one that i just watched that was this is probably the worst, but it's still amazing. Is uh, Tango and Cash? Have you seen Tango and Cash? I haven't. No. Oh. Sylvester Stallone and Kurt Russell. Oh man. Right. Okay. It is. Uh, it's horrible, but I loved it. Um, <laughs> next, Dream Car. Dream Car. You know, what, dude. Honestly, like, just cars aren't really my. They're not. They're not. They've never been on my radar. Something that I want. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. Actually, no. But saying that, oh. saying that, um, oh, what is it called? Um, the car that Ryan Gosling drives in Drive. Um, what does he drive? That one. That's the car. Okay. Hang on. <laughs> A quick little Google. Google for those of uh, uh, Ryan. What car is this? Oh, what the fuck? Wait, there's multiples. Oh, it's Malibu. Chevy, what? Mal- Chevy, Chevy Malibu. That's the okay. That's my dream car. Okay, okay. I can fuck with that. That's nice. Um, but they're not really. They're not common at all in England. Oh, I don't, actually, wow. I don't even think you can get one over here. It would be very expensive to get one over there. I'm sure. Yeah, shit over. Yeah. Um, let's see. Is there is there a particular spot you are just you can't wait to get back and play is there a specific venue or even like a dream venue where you're like that's still the that's still the mark um we've always we've always as a band wanted to play red rocks just because i i remember like watching an incubus dvd i think from there growing up and i was like that place is madness it just looks really beautiful um but to be honest at this point in time, I would do anything to play in front of a hundred people in Slovakia on yeah. a Sunday night. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> shit that like when I was doing tours recently or the, 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 the year, I mean, we actually did a tour a few years ago. We went through Europe and at some point in the tour, me and me and Dan, which both were like, this is, it was actually in Slovakia. It was a Sunday night. <laughs> we were meant to play the the venue, which we'd never been there before. So we had new, no idea what we were worth. So like the promoter was like, right, I'll put you in a thousand cap venue. And on the off chance that it really doesn't go that way for you, we've got a bar, a pirate bar, and you guys guys can play in like the dance hall bit of that. 
And I was like, well, fuck that. We need to worry about that, surely. Get there. Uh, to all my mad, just like, <laughs> yeah, uh, you're playing in the small room tonight because it's only done like 67 tickets or whatever. Oh, and I was like, oh, man, I would rather be dead than this right now. <laughs> and then obviously a few hours before the gig, you start being like, well, this might be gig 150 of this cycle, but this is the first ever fucking time these people... Yeah. will see us and maybe the last and ever see us let's make sure we go and rip it you know what i mean so yeah i'd do anything to to so any gig at this point yes. would be suffice absolutely yes. any gig whatsoever well uh great answer i would love if you guys let's we'll make a, a prayer to the gig gods gods <laughs> red rocks because i will fucking drive me and all of my buddies in a caravan up there and we will camp <laughs> out and and uh, it'll be a show um I love what's the last record you listened to front to back oh last record i can tell you actually i, don't, I can't remember what it's called by but it's an article called mahalia um she's like a uh, british singer songwriter mm-hmm. her record love and compromise was outrageous uh okay. and yeah there's probably about on the whole record, there's probably about seven or eight songs. Where I'm just like, this is just silly. So oh, yeah, okay. that's a record I listen to start and finish. And also uh, our friends Architects just put out a record. So I listened to that on mm-hmm. a few a few times back to front, like I always do when my mates put an album because I'm just interested to see what people are up to. Yeah. Um, so yeah, probably those two, man. That was, um, there's some good shit on that one. There's a lot of unexpected shit on that one for me, Architects. Yeah, yeah, I'm for a, sure. You guys, you guys turned... Uh, me into like a massive Architects fan when we were making Night oh, People. Oh, really? He loved that. <laughs> yeah, because we when we were making we were making Night People, uh, we were going to like Mitchell's Deli. Do you remember Mitchell's? Did we go? Yeah, and um, either that or we were going to get pho. I don't remember which, but we all piled in like two cars, and I went with you guys to like tell you how to get there, and. Uh, yeah, when we went to the five place. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. yeah. and yeah, the the architects. I guess it would have been three records ago now. I forget the name. It's got like the sort of sun, like blacked out yeah. on it. That had just come out like that day, and mm. I I had never heard them. And you like blasted it in the car. I was like, who the fuck is this? Because I'm <laughs> buying it right now. Uh, so you guys made made an evangelist out of me for architects. I love everything they've done. Um, love that. Call, text, or FaceTime? Do you have a preference? Uh, cool. I mean, I actually do a lot of voice noting because, like, there's sometimes like I want to say something, but I just can't be asked to like write out a paragraph. So I just do a one minute voice note. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm always, I'd rather be on the phone. Um, love a FaceTime, love a phone call. I just think some like text for me has that space in which people can like read into what you're saying mm, but and, that's true. and kind of like digest it whatever works for them versus the way you're intending it to yeah, be said yeah they, they so. can impart their own mood and their own headspace onto 100%. whatever you said so it's a little more dangerous there's been times i've read text messages where someone's saying you know retrospectively when i then talk to them about they're saying something quite nice and i've read them and like oh, fuck bitch. you, you yeah. i mean <laughs> bitch uh yeah <laughs> Okay, so last question, since the podcast is one more for safety. This is sort of the one more for safety question. Uh, I have a couple of different options, but I think I'm going to go with, yeah. What do you want your your, your headstone to read? Oh, good question. Um, I don't know because what, whatever I say, it will be narcissistic because it's going to be about how fucking awesome I am. Um, <laughs> well, that's cool too because you are awesome. Yeah, I, yeah, I definitely don't want that thing of um, father of three or do you know what I mean? Like when someone's yeah. like, I want it to like just say something that's really punchy. So I don't know, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't, that's such a good question. I need to think about that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to, you know, at some point, so inevitable, right? I want it to be written down given to as many people so they, they can they yeah, fuck so like... up for me um but yeah i guess something like just and also something quite satire you know like something quite ricky gervais yeah i would probably go you know what i mean so i'm gonna 
I don't think about that, but it would it would definitely be something which is poking fun at the fact that I'm dead. Yeah, probably as well. Yeah, you know? something something lighter. Yeah, and and not so serious. Of here lies father of three, good husband, all that. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, yeah, it'll be missed by all that, and also like I'm, I I don't even I 100 percent don't even want a funeral. I just want like a gathering in which people just come and they just rip it up. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I don't see. <laughs> death is death is completely inevitable and it's one thing we all have in common because it's happening yeah um and it's really natural so i think yeah i just want like Again. a weekend of bernie's i want my friends to have to like take me around for like a night on the town while i'm dead and just like parody, <laughs> parody me around no i don't know uh, <laughs> just something fun um yeah well this was this is a blast man i'm really i'm really grateful that you did this uh it's good to see your face i know we, we've text and talked a little bit but it's good to see you and see that you're doing well and and see, um brother. and i'm just i'm grateful that you did this anything you want to plug instagram whatever you want to you know put out there and let's get it out there um but that's it you there love it mate love uh, it thank you for your time man oh, i man. enjoyed it very much i'm looking forward to hearing it back yeah i'll uh i'll talk to you soon thanks man Tell, give right, my love yeah, to the let, boys. Let me know when it's all. Uh, I'll say hello to everybody. Let me know when it's all when it's all happening, going live and shit. And we'll, we'll push it and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, I will. All right, brother. See you, brother. Take Thank care. you so much. Much love, man.